Welcome back. So I know a lot of you out there are foodies, and this next one is for you. Gastro Obscura is the latest book from the folks at Atlas Obscura. It gives an eye-opening look at the food and drink from across the world. And author Cecily Wong shares some of her favorites with me. The book is called Gastro Obscura. It's a, it's a food adventurer's guide, and it takes a reader around the world in 500 um, entries that are food-based, but it's not just foods. We cover all sorts of things. So we have forgotten food histories and endangered traditions. We have food experiences, festivals, cool things to do with food. It's kind of just like edible wonder of every variety. Kind of a play on Atlas Obscura, correct? Exactly. This is, if you're familiar with Atlas Obscura, this is Atlas Obscura, but for food. I love it. I love it. Well, let's start with the King's Ginger on page three. Yes, the King's Ginger. This is one of my favorite. It's a liquor that was made especially for King Edward VII. He had just taken the throne. It was like the early 1900s. And the royal physician was worried about his health because he went on these long drives through the countryside. He had a topless car and he was being exposed to all this kind of cold, damp weather. The physician's solution was to create the King's Ginger, which is a liquor for him to put in his driving flask that would then keep him warm and, and vibrant. And so it's it's brandy, and then there's there's lemon, there's ginger, there's honey, there's all the stuff that's that's good for you, but it's um it is liquor for drinking. I mean for driving. Um, I mean you know not something typically we approve of anymore, but hey, the king back then it was good. What about rolling in the grits, page three twenty six. Rolling in the Grits is a competition that takes place in a small town called St. George, South Carolina. And their claim to fame, it's a small town of like 2,000 people, but their claim to fame is that they eat the most grits per capita of anyone in the world. And so to celebrate this, they have this competition <laughs> called Rolling in the Grits. They take a kiddie pool, they fill it with 3,000 pounds of prepared grits, and then they see who can roll in it and collect as many pounds of grits on their body as possible, I think in 10 seconds. That is something nobody has heard about ever. I think <laughs> maybe a few people, but I love this story. Alhira, page 37. Yeah, so this is a very special sausage. It is, um, it's from Portugal. It's kind of a, a regular sausage um, on the outside. It's made of chicken and garlic, but it's got this great history, which is in the 19th century during the Spanish Inquisition. Anyone practicing Judaism had to be very, very careful or mm. they would be persecuted. So one telltale sign of practicing Judaism was not having any hanging sausages in your kitchen because sausages are made of pork traditionally in Portugal right. and Jewish people don't eat pork. So what they did was they decided to create a decoy sausage that looked exactly like the regular Portuguese sausage, but was made out of chicken. And so they took these sausages, they hung them up, they made a show out of eating them. And this chicken sausage saved thousands of lives. That is incredible because all of, because of the hanging of it. Yes. That is fascinating. I did not recognize that. What about the Monkey Buffet Festival on page 168? The Monkey Buffet Festival is exactly what it sounds like. It is a fruit buffet for monkeys that takes place every year in central Thailand. There is a 13th century Thai temple that locals just decorate with fresh fruit, pineapples, mangoes, durians, anything you can think of. And then they just let the town's monkeys just go crazy on them. Um, and they, they feast, they throw the fruit. They just have a fantastic day. Really? Okay. I have a, like a weird phobia of monkeys. That's my own thing, but they're welcome to all the durian fruit. Um, then you're not going to like this. Yeah. <laughs> that, that festival is not for you. It's not for me, but at least I get to read about it and educate myself. Finally, Mad Honey, which is on page 77 and 112. Yes, yes, a double mad honey. So this is a honey that is, um, it comes from Turkey, specifically from kind of these steep cliffs that are around the Black Sea. And it's made from a special kind of rhododendron that has a special neurotoxin that when made into honey, um, it causes hallucinations and paralysis and mm. things of that nature. And yeah. so in small, small doses, um, it's not that strong. It's used to kind of treat um, like, like diabetes or hypertension, but if right. you take it in, in larger amounts, which is actually not that much, it's like over a tablespoon, 
that's when things get pretty loopy. And there's actually a great war story about Mad Honey, which is that in 67 BC, the Romans were invading what is now Turkey and King Mithridates and his men were trying to fend them off. And so they put mad honeycombs along their paths so that the the Romans would eat it. Um, And of course they did, they were hungry and they all, they all started hallucinating. They all were paralyzed. They all fell along the side of the road. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And then they came back and killed them all. I know, I know. And so all, they lost like that. Thousands of men based on, you know, honey related death warfare. Now that's an epic story, right?